One of the things that I like about Foundry is the ability to use animated tokens without any extra setup. In case you haven't seen my previous video on animated tokens and portraits, I'll be putting in a link above, but very simply, anything that is on the scene, you can make it a .webm file and it'll play just like this. Anything in a character sheet can be a .webp and it'll also keep the animation. So here we can see some creators for virtual tabletops. We have Vivid Adventures, Devin Knight, and Jinker. There are many more. I'll be putting a collection of ones I found down below in the description. It is also quite possible to create your own tokens that can be used in Foundry. I'll be covering that in a future video. The ones I have here, I just used WoW Model Viewer and then did some very simple editing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually use the animated tokens in Foundry. One way you may want to use these animations is by, well, not having them play all the time or by switching between different forms, like maybe you have a running animation, a walking, or just a standing still, like an idle. One easy way to do this in your game is by using the wildcard HUD and the wildcard feature that is built into Foundry. You will need the token HUD wildcard module. After you've installed the module, let's go ahead and take a look at the character sheet. So looking at the character sheet, I have randomized wildcard images on and checked right now. And for the default token image, I have everything in the same folder. You could have this set up in a different way if you wanted to have them named. Um, you just need to follow the wildcard function. I'll be putting a link down below so you can have more information on that in case you're not familiar with how it works. But in my case, I am just using the asterisk to call all of the .webms in one folder. After you've enabled the module and set the image correctly, you will see a new icon appear which you can use to switch between various images for this one token. This could be useful in case you don't want the animation to be playing the whole time, or perhaps you want to switch for specific scenarios such as when a token joins combat. Something you may also want to do is set it up so that when you make an attack, the animation switches, and then after the attack is finished, the animation stops and reverts to whatever you had before. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that. We will want to use the MIDI QOL module for this, because we're going to be using the MIDI QOL on call macro. In case you're unfamiliar, it's going to be this right here, add macro to call on use, meaning that when we use a feature or an attack, it is also going to activate a macro at the same time. Let's take a look at the macro we want to use for our setup today. So here's the macro we're using. It is pretty simple. All it does is it has two images, one here and one down the bottom. The first one, we have our file path here, and the second one, we have our file path here. The first one is what is going to change when the macro is called, meaning when the attack is made. And the second one is going to change back to the idle, whatever is the stationary animation. It could be a PNG as well. And it's going to change after six seconds. You can adjust the time right here if you need it to be longer. Uh, so all we need to do is copy the name of the macro, go to our character sheet, go into the item. At the very bottom, we're going to name or put the name of our macro right here and close it out. Now let's go ahead and test out the stomp. If it is working correctly, when the stomp attack is made, it will also activate that macro and switch the image to the charge animation. All right, targeting, going up to our token action HUD, making the attack. We see the dice are rolled. We see that it comes in and it hits. The animation changes. There's a little bit of a lag, but then after the six seconds are up, it changes back. So as mentioned, you can play around with the macro and change the time to figure out what works best. You would, however, need to set up individual macros for each attack. But again, as you can see, it's not that hard to change. All you need to do is just change the file path and change the name and then put it in the MIDI QOL as the attack and that's it. As a final idea, you can create a macro like this, which again, I'll be putting this down below in the description. All it's going to do is toggle the combat state, adding our token to the encounter. And then it's going to update the image for the combat. So maybe we want to have the weapon drawn or something that fits uh, a token in combat. And then after we execute it a second time, it's going to toggle the combat again and change the image again. So it looks like this changing once and adding to combat and then changing back and removing from combat. However, it is worth noting, you want to make sure you have the correct token selected because without any 
you know, if statements to determine if the token is correct, it'll change any token that is selected. For example, if I select this token here and execute, it's going to change the image. So just something to be mindful of in case you want to use something like this. Well, that's going to be about it for today. As I mentioned earlier, I will be making a separate video about how you can make your own anime tokens in case that's something that interests you. But we're going to be finishing up for today. Please check the description for links to all these amazing creators as well as some more that I did not have a chance to cover today. Thanks everyone!